that our hearts are broken, really, with uh, what we see in Gaza, uh, especially the loss of our colleagues in the hospital. Uh, but what has what is happening really is an act of genocide. It's not just bombardment. It's not just barbaric attack on the civilian population. In reality, Netanyahu has failed drastically. He does not have any military success. And I am telling you, he does not have even military targets. This man and his government is uh, using Palestinian blood and maybe even Israeli blood to stay in power to evade the, the three cases of corruption that he has to face. And he's doing anything to keep his seat. Uh, but what's happening in Gaza is totally unacceptable. And by the way, the 213 people killed there, you have to add to them 25 Palestinians who were also killed in the West Bank during the last week. Uh, there are 1,400 injuries, serious injuries in Gaza. But also, in addition to that, there are 3,000 injuries in the West Bank. And uh, while we are talking, the army is still shooting people here in Ramallah and in Hebron and in Bethlehem. And uh, some of them are uh, at high risk because they were shot with high-velocity bullets. Uh, what happened in Gaza, most important, it's very important to mention that the Israeli army uh, eliminated 14 families completely. I mean, they killed the grandfather, the grandmother, the father, the mother, and all the children. 14 families have been eliminated from the civil record. This is, this is so horrible. And out of these 14 families, one child only stayed alive. A two-month-old child who lost nine of his brothers and sisters, as well as his mother and father. What future is going to be for this child? This is what worries me most. The other thing I want to mention is that besides bombardment and destruction of people's homes, and there is no justification whatsoever for destroying eight high, high rise buildings by the Israeli bombs, which are American made, there is no justification of shooting people's homes and destroying them completely while people are asleep, knowing that Gaza does not have civil defense equipment, knowing that Gaza, since 19 since 2006 is under siege for 15 years. And the equipment that the civil defense has goes back to 1996. So not only you bombard people and people are stuck below the rubble. Imagine, imagine the feelings of, of, of a person who's hearing the so voice of a child or a, a mother or a man under the rubble and you cannot reach out to him and he just suffocates to death. This is the worst that can happen. In other countries, when an earthquake happens, people rush to help. Other countries rush to help. What do we have from other countries today except statements that Israel has the right to defend itself? Defend itself? It is the country that is occupying us. It is the, it is the entity that is practicing apartheid against the Palestinian people. You can't even equate between the two sides. Not, and, and, you are not, and, and they are not only doing that, they are favoring Israel the aggressor. Let me also tell you something about what's happening in Gaza. We receive calls all the time from mothers, fathers, and we have our colleagues there who are working on the ground. The worst thing is the psychological stress that is exercised against the children. Bombardment after bombardment the whole night. What you see in Gaza against the Palestinian population, but especially against the Palestinian children, is psychological terror. I call it psychological terror that Netanyahu and his government are practicing against the people.